up you guys welcome back to another one if you are new to the channel hi i'm gold pony i do new car truck suv reviews on youtube and today we are in the new 2021 volkswagen tiguan courtesy of hanover volkswagen in hanover pa for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. And so I wanted to check this one out today because this is an insanely good looking SUV to start. And there are actually some minor updates for the 2021 model year. And this is an often requested video, but really what comes to my mind is, are you going to get this one now in the 2021 model year and probably get a heck of a deal? Or are you going to wait until the redesign in 2022? So that question is going to be the one on everyone's mind. And so in this video, I will be going over everything about this one, testing out acceleration, braking, sound system, exhaust clips, steering feel, ride quality, all that fun stuff. So having said all of that, what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing. And so as you can imagine, there are several different trim levels for the 2021 Tiguan. First one being the S, starting at $25,245. SE for $27,395. SE R line black for $30,595, SEL for $32,545, and the SEL premium R line, the one we have today, starting at $39,095. And so, with the exception of that SEL premium R line, all of those other trim levels come standard with front wheel drive. If you wanted to add all wheel drive to any of those other trims, simply add $1,300 to any of those prices. And so, regardless of trim level that you go with, though, the power plant on the Tiguan is going to be the same. Powering this one is a two liter turbocharged inline four cylinder, putting out 184 horsepower at around 4,300 RPM, 221 pound-feet of torque coming in at 1,600 RPM. Power again sent to front wheels or all wheels through an eight-speed automatic with MPG numbers coming in at 23 in the city, 29 on the highway, taking regular unleaded fuel. And so, but before we put this one to the test, give it a little acceleration test here, I did want to mention there are actually some drive modes that do come standard on the Tiguan, and that drive mode dial is located directly behind the shifter. And so with that, not only do you have on-road drive modes, but also off-road drive modes as well. And so the way that works is if you press in the mode button in the center there, that is going to give you your on-mode drive modes, and they will include eco, normal, sport, and custom. And then if you were to turn it to the right or the left, that is going to give you your off-road drive modes. And those will include snow, on-road, off-road, and off-road custom. And so all in all, when it comes to those adjustments, what they actually adjust is the shift points, the throttle response, steering sensitivity, the all-wheel drive system engagement, and the traction control systems as well. So all in all, you don't always get all of those adjustments on a lot of other manufacturers out there. So that is pretty cool. I like that. But Having said all of that now, let's go ahead and find a straightaway and let's put the acceleration here to the test and let's see how quickly we can get our new 2021 Volkswagen Tiguan here up to speed. All right, you guys, so I got it in sport driving mode here just to give it the full experience. We're gonna wait for this truck to pass here and then we'll do a quick little acceleration test in I think about now. Here we go. And off we go. Oh. <laughs> Dang, I like these digital gauges. Eh, it's not bad. It's not the quickest thing in the world. Not the quickest SUV I've ever tested. But you know what? For the size of this, it does the trick. Certainly not going to have any issues merging onto the highway. And quite honestly, who's going to be racing a Tiguan anyways? So plenty of an acceleration for this one. I'm not too worried. But to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And so up front, you will find 13.4 inch ventilated front discs. In the back, 12.2 inch ventilated rear discs. As far as that 60 to zero stopping distance goes, it comes in at 134 feet, which quite honestly, it is a little bit on the higher side if you were comparing it to some of the others in its class but it is a softer braking feel I will say that so it doesn't bite quite as hard as some of the other SUVs but really 134 feet it's kind of that borderline of average to not as quick as it should be but still braking feel is acceptable I would put it that way but then Touching on suspension and handling. Up front, you're gonna get a McPherson strut front suspension. In the back, independent multi-link rear suspension, front and rear stabilizer bars. As far as the ride quality goes, it's probably the first thing I noticed in this one. This one rides pretty darn good, I gotta be honest. Maybe it's because I'm coming off of driving the 
Golf GTI, but I will say the ride quality is plenty fine in the Tiguan. I would even say above average. It rides pretty darn good. As far as the steering feel goes, I do have it in sport driving mode here, and the steering feel is nice. It has a nice weight to it. Not overly weighted, but not underly weighted either. I guess you could say it's just right for the Tiguan, so no issues there for me. As far as cabin noise goes, Volkswagen got it right once again there. I've gone over 50 miles per hour. There's no exterior wind noise coming into the cabin, so we'll say well well done Volkswagen on cabin noise for the Tiguan, even with this panoramic sunroof. A lot of times wind noise will come in through that as well, but even with that, it's fine. No issues there. Touching on visibility, I can see perfectly fine out the back. Second row headrests are kind of, you know, I don't know, they're kind of normal. I wouldn't say it's too bad. It's pretty much as expected. And honestly, it's above average, really. If you were comparing it to maybe the Atlas Cross Sport, let's say. So plenty of visibility in this thing. And rain sensing windshield wipers actually do come standard on either of the SEL trim levels if you wanted to get those automatic windshield wipers, which is always pretty cool. But that about rounds up the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's all go ahead to take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2021. Volkswagen Tiguan. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2021 Volkswagen Tiguan finished in white, just in front of the white snow. It looks so good out here. But anyways, let's go ahead and make our way to the front of this one first. Halogen headlights are actually going to come standard on all trim levels, but the one we have today being the SEL Premium. And either way, automatic feature does come standard on all trims, meaning when it starts to get dark out at night, those headlights are going to turn on automatically for you. Also wanted to mention the headlight housings are going to be slightly different in design, whether you get the LEDs that we have here or the halogens, so that's going to differ slightly as well. So just below them, fog lights with the low speed corner illuminating feature coming with the SER line trim level and up. Then in the middle of it all, you will find that front grille with a dual horizontal bar design for all trim levels essentially, except if you were to go with the SER line black, it is going to be a black bar design as opposed to the chrome that you're seeing right now. And if you were to go with one of the R line trim levels, you're going to get that R line badging found on the passenger side of that front grille. And of course, down below, you do have some front air curtains directing air around the wheel entire combination as well. But I love the white and black theme that we have here on the Tiguan. It looks so dang good up front. But anyways, let's now go ahead and make our way to the side of this one. All right, so starting up top, black roof rails coming with the S and SE trim levels. However, if you were to go with one of the SEL trim levels, you will find silver roof rails. So a little bit of differentiation there. Rear privacy glass does come standard across the board. Black window surrounds with the S and the SER line black. Otherwise, you get chrome window surrounds for all other trim levels, of course. Then take a look at the side mirrors. They are power adjustable body colored side mirrors for all trim levels. They will be heated for all trims as well with integrated turn signals actually then as well. So that's pretty nice. And of course, with the R-Line trim, you're gonna get some R-Line badging found on the front fender once again. There's a little bit of chrome trim towards the bottom portion of the doors then as well. I wanted to mention that. So take a look down though at the wheels. This is where one of the slight changes come in for the 2021 Tiguan. There's actually some new wheel designs for the 2021 model year for the S and the SE trims only. So now you will find 17 inch double five spoke alloys for those two specific trim levels at least. But other than that, SCR line black gives you 20 inch black alloys. SEL trim level gives you 19 inch five spoke. And then the SEL premium, the ones we have today, gives you 20 inch two-toned alloy wheels. So of course is what you're looking at right now. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the back of the Tiguan. So but now since we are round back up top, you will actually find a gloss black shark fin antenna for all trim levels. Just below that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light, just below that rear window wiper. LED taillights actually do come standard for every single trim level. Gotta love that. Also gonna find some four motion all wheel drive badging on the right side of the tailgate there. If you were to go with all wheel drive on the Tiguan at least, and then just below it all, I guess this is one of the parts where I feel like Volkswagen could approve upon for the Tiguan at least. It looks like there's dual exhaust outlets. It really does with chrome exhaust tips. And it really makes you want to believe that there are. And I wish that there were, but there's actually not. Those are fake. There's actually a single exhaust outlet tucked away on the passenger side underneath as I'm showing you guys now. So either way, I think you guys know what we have to do next. As always, here is that exhaust clip.
right, so now since we are around back of the Tiguan, there are a few different ways to go ahead and open this thing up. There is a button on the key fob itself. That is one way. Also a button on the driver's side door. And of course, there is a button on the lift gate itself as well. As far as how it opens, power lift gate is going to come on the SEL trim levels. There is actually a hands-free then power lift gate for the SEL premium that we have today. So if you have your hands full, that is not going to be a problem with this particular trim level. But either way, once opened up, this is interesting. And so once opened up, first thing I wanted to mention to you guys is there is an available third row for the Tiguan. If you were to get that, behind that third row, cargo space comes in at 12 cubic feet, so not a whole lot of space. This is a kind of mid-sized, smaller SUV anyways, but with all of the rear seats folded, 65.7 cubic feet then. That's not too bad, but a seven-seat configuration can be had, although you can also get the two-row configuration like we have today. But either way, in that cargo area, you will also find a 12-volt power outlet, which is always nice carpeted cargo area as well. There is a cargo cover back there too. There's some tie down anchors, also some grocery bag hooks. And if you were to lift up underneath that cargo floor, there's actually gonna be a little bit of in-floor storage back there as well. You have a spare tire back there and a place to put the cargo cover if it were not in use. So pretty much everything you could possibly want in the cargo area, I will say that. But then making our way to the rear leg room, if you have the third row, that's gonna come in at 27.9 inches, which is less than my old Ford Mustang GT, which came in at 29 inches. So really not a whole lot of space in the third row if you had it. But second row legroom comes in at 36.6 inches. So for reference, I mean even six feet tall. This is how much space I had back there. Also 12 volt power outlet will come back there as well. There is rear ventilation for the SE trim level and up. Also rear center armrest with cup holders coming standard back there. And also for those rear passengers, they will find a phone charging port, a little bit of storage in between it all then as well. So only additional thing I would have liked to personally see in that second row would be rear window sunshades. I think that would be a nice addition, at least to our SEL premium trim level that we have here. But the Atlas has it, so I guess that's good. But anyways, making our way now up to the front seats, manually adjustable cloth seating comes with the S, VTEX leatherette seating comes with the SE trim levels and a Vienna leather seating comes with the SEL premium. That's of course what you guys are looking at right now. 10-way power driver seat with power lumbar for the SE trims, heated front seats for the SE trim level and up, power adjustable passenger seat then for the SEL premium trim level that we have today. Overall seats are plenty comfortable, plenty of adjustments here in this one, including lumbar support. So really no reason why you would not be able to find your perfect driving position. But then taking a look at the steering wheel, it is tilt and telescoping and it does telescope out quite a bit. If you were a taller person, that's always a nice thing to have. Leatherette wrap steering wheel coming with the SE trim levels and the SEL leather wrap steering wheel then coming with the SEL premium and that SEL premium also gives you a heated steering wheel which I'm loving today since it's in the 20s with snow absolutely everywhere so I love the heated steering wheel on this thing but now let's go ahead and make our way to the startup let me first start by showing you guys the key here you do have your Volkswagen logo on the one side and when you flip it around lock unlock that button to pop the rear lift gate and that times two button is going to be remote start which only comes with the SEL trim levels you don't have to get the SEL premium just any of the the SELs and you're going to get that but keyless entry with the push button start is going to come with the SE trim level and up so all I'm going to do is simply put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button which is located directly in front of the shifter there and so now it gets even better with the gauges let me explain why Volkswagen digital cockpit or full digital gauge cluster is going to come with the SEL trim levels either one so that is of course what you guys are looking at right now couple reasons why I love Volkswagen and Audi's digital gauges because they are quite similar. Not just because you could adjust a bunch of different things up there, including how many miles you have left until you hit empty, your radio information, when you need your next oil change, outside temperature, the list goes on. But when you hit the view button on the right side of the steering wheel, it completely changes it. There's actually like three different configurations you could choose to display up there. Like I could choose to display 
just how many miles I have left until I hit empty if I wanted to. I don't want to, of course, but you can also choose to have a more traditional setup where you have the tachometer on the left, speedometer on your right, and whatever you want in the middle, or you can choose to kind of have it all up on your screen at once, including your radio information, average miles per gallon at any given time, how many miles you have left until you hit empty, and that makes your digital speed super small in the bottom, but really a bunch of different configurations you can do with this Volkswagen digital cockpit, and I love that. It looks so darn cool up there, but anyways, let's now go ahead and make our way to overall interior quality. A panoramic sunroof that we have today is going to come with the SER line black trim level end up, and it is truly a panoramic sunroof. It goes all the way into the back, and the best part is it doesn't let in all that exterior wind noise when you're driving quickly, so that is pretty darn cool. I love that. You do have a little bit of rubberized storage just on top of the infotainment screen, just on top of everything, really, so that's pretty cool, too, so the things don't slide around. Dual zone climate control coming with the SE trim level and up. Wireless phone charger coming with the SE trim level and up, which is actually located directly in front of the shifter, in case anybody was curious about that. Stainless steel pedal caps coming with the SE R-Line black trim level, and you kind of have that to a certain degree with the SEL premium that we have here today too so that's pretty cool auto dimming rear view mirror coming with the SEL trim levels and it is a frameless auto dimming rear view mirror which looks amazing you have a compass in the upper right hand corner and home link controls to up to three different garage doors as well so that's wonderful ambient lighting also coming with the SEL premium trim level that we have here today which I love also big fan of the plastic carbon fiber ish look that you can find just above the passenger side glove box continues onto the doors as well that's pretty cool you have some nice stitch leather found on the doors in addition to that that's pretty nice just around the wireless phone charger you have a 12 volt power outlet two phone charging ports in there as well in case more than one person wants to charge their phone at the same time there's an electromechanical parking brake to the left of the shifter there just behind that you have a looks like a place to store your cell phone you have dual cup holders there and a little bit of storage within the center armrest. It's pretty deep, it's just not very wide. But anyways, that's gonna be there for you as well. But overall, interior quality is fine. It's nothing crazy, but it's perfectly fine for the Tiguan. Now let's go ahead and make our way to the tech display on this one. 6.5 inch color touchscreen display coming with the S trim level. It's the only trim you're gonna get that smaller screen. Every other trim level though, being the SE trim level and up, is gonna give you that eight inch color touchscreen display which is what you're looking at right now. Really doesn't matter though with the S, you still get Bluetooth and audio streaming, you still get Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, but it does get better with the eight inch screen because with this eight inch screen, you get wireless Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. And I would say the majority of manufacturers still aren't doing that right now. I know Hyundai does it for some of their vehicles, but I love wireless Android Auto, Apple CarPlay because nobody likes the cluttered wires everywhere. So that's super cool. And that's for the SE trim level and up again. Factory navigation is going to come in the SEL trim levels, although you don't really need it as long as you have a smartphone since you got Android Auto, Apple CarPlay anyways. You can check out your climate control information up there, fuel prices. You could set up a couple different cool looking clocks up there if you wanted to as well. And of course, you can check out your radio information up there. So sound systems are going to differ. Six speakers are going to come with all trim levels, but the SEL premium that we have today because this SEL Premium is going to give you a 12-speaker Fender sound system. So, having said that, do believe you guys know what we have to do next. Let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today, and let's test out the clarity of this one. I've been like jamming out to the 80s with a digital gauge cluster, let me tell you. That sounds like it actually had a good amount of bass, even for an 80s song, so that's pretty cool. Really, whenever I test out the Fender sound system, it's really above and beyond. It's a really nice sound system for the Tiguan, I will say that. But last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on the tech display is when you do put the Tiguan in reverse, you will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board. Also though, for the SEL Premium at least, you will find a bird's eye view camera as well, giving you that bird's eye view, letting you know not only what is behind you, what is all around you though as well, which as always is going to lead us into safety. It's the first thing I wanted to mention, this is an IIHS top safety pick only if 
you get the SEL premium for the LED headlights. Otherwise, it's not, unfortunately. But front side, side curtain airbags do come standard. In the back, you're going to have latch, aka lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats. Tire pressure monitoring system, but also standard across the board, is going to be a blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert, forward collision warning with automatic emergency braking, and pedestrian monitoring system as well. Then if you were to go with the SE trim level and up, that is actually going to add adaptive cruise control. And if you were to go with the SER line black trim level, that is going to give you front and rear parking sensors then as well. And so overall, when it comes to my final thoughts of the Tiguan, the first thing that always catches my eye is the design. The exterior styling on the Tiguan is wonderful. It's an amazing looking SUV, quite honestly. Third row seating is a nice option to have in this one. Although it's not gonna be the third row space that you're gonna find in vehicles like the Atlas, perhaps. It's gonna be quite crunched back there, but it may work for a small child, who knows. Blind spot monitoring system being standard on all trim levels is also a great thing. That isn't always the case on other manufacturers, so that's pretty cool. Love the digital cages with Volkswagen. That's always a big plus too. When it comes to my constructive criticism on this one, LED headlights really should come standard on all trim levels at this point. Many other manufacturers like Mazda, I'm sure there's some others out there I can't think of at this time, do actually give you LEDs on all trim levels. So maybe for the 2022 model year when it's redesigned, it'll have that. Also, this one is somewhat underpowered, although it does get the job done. You don't really need a crazy amount of power for SUVs. It's still somewhat underpowered when you compare it to the competition. I'll just put it that way. And so in the end, my question to you guys, put it in the comments, your answer. If you're interested in the Tiguan, are you going to be waiting for the 2022 redesign or are you going to be trying to take advantage of probably some amazing deals you can get on the 2021, seeing as the redesign is right around the corner? Let me know in the comments section below. That is about it for this one, you guys. Feel free to follow me on social media, on TikTok, if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it actually hits YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews. That is what we do here on this channel. After all, I do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I'll see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.